Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor and the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. We're on Podbean, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. We're also on Dash Radio on their Nothing But Net channel every single weeknight at 7 p.m. Also check out Five Reasons YouTube before floor, an hour before every game. Post up 5R as soon as the game ends. Hit the subscribe button. You won't miss any of our streams on any of the South Florida sports during the week. Also, FiveReasonsSports.com. Spell that one out. Get the latest takeaways from Brady Hawk and others. And check out the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. We always mention our product code. It's 5RSN. 5RSN, and that gets you discounts. 10% off if you sweat. You got to go to GetSalis.com. That's G-E-T-S-A-L-I-S.com. Replace your electrolytes in a healthy way. It comes in these little packets, and again, it doesn't have all the sugar that Gatorade and Powerade will give you. Also, Check out TherapistPreferred.com for your premium CBD. That's the tincture, the sports cream, the gummies. 25% off at TherapistPreferred.com. Again, the code 5RSN. And now, tonight's episode. Down the best day. Yay. Uh, five on the floor. Ride for my dogs. Where is the thing? You can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buckley said, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor playing. Got an all band. Y'all seen the block. Stop the one hand. And Pat, we trust. It's power, have the guts. We're here to bring the heat. Y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor and the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. We're on Podbean, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. We're also on Dash Radio on their Nothing But Net channel. It's every single weeknight at 7 p.m. Also check out Post Up 5R on the Five Reasons YouTube channel. We also do Before Floor there. Make sure you hit subscribe. You'll get all of our content. And make sure you get the content at fivereasonsports.com. You don't have to subscribe there, but you will get Brady Hawk's latest takeaways in print form. We're going to do them here in podcast form as well. All right. Also, our sponsor code. It's 5RSN. That's the number 5RSN. You can use it at a bunch of different places. Two of those places are Get Salis. That's G-E-T-S-A-L-I-S.com. That's if you sweat, okay? You're any kind of endurance athlete or just you sweat. You need to replace your electrolytes. You want to do it in a healthy way. Go to GetSalis.com. You can replace your electrolytes there in a much healthier, less sugary way than Gatorade or Powerade. It comes in these little packets. It's really easy to take. That's GetSalis.com. 10% off with 5RSN. And for your premium CBD, TherapistPreferred.com. Use the code 5RSN and you'll get 25% off there. And that's the tincture, the sports cream, the gummies, and everything else. So get salus.com, therapistpreferred.com, the code 5RSN. And now, tonight's episode. All right, Ethan Skolnick back on five on the floor. Here's tonight's floor plan. I got Brady Hawk. You can follow him at Brady Hawk 305. I'm Ethan Skolnick. You can follow me at Ethan J. Skolnick and Five Reasons Sports. Alex Salita was here at the arena as well as the Miami Heat get blistered by the Suns tonight. Fast start, 20 points in the first four and a half minutes with Kyle Lowry racking up six assists. Went completely cold offensively after that. Didn't defend, but mostly didn't rebound. They were getting killed on the boards until the last three or four minutes. I know everybody's going to talk about Yurtsevin, who came in with some garbage time minutes and seven points and four rebounds. I don't know if that would have made a difference. We're going to discuss that. But overall, it was a lot more than that. No Jimmy Butler tonight, but also no Chris Paul. So these teams were both without uh, kind of the driving forces of them. And the Suns did to the Heat what the Heat did to the Suns when the Suns were at full strength out in Phoenix, just reverse fortunes. I guess we got to apologize to Eddie Johnson here since I was mocking him during the game. Uh, They came up victorious. And I think we saw tonight why the Suns are the best team in basketball. We're going to go through five takeaways here for you quickly as we look forward. Brady, number one. Yeah, I think you hit on the first one for me. It's just like the interior stuff. Uh, There's two sides to it. I think the first thing for me, uh, the eight and Mikhail Bridges stuff early on, like they just had counters wherever Miami was presenting. Like they were ready for it in ways that other teams just haven't. Uh, the eight inside of it, as we talked about, we know what they're going to do. They put PJ on Booker, they put Bam on Aiton, and they just kind of predict the switch. Uh, and as Nakaya says all the times, the best way to beat a switch is a slip. Aiton was slipping like right out the gate, specifically after my win on the run. They started when Aiton was kind of feasting down low. They were slipping. Aiton was kind of being able to do whatever he wanted down there. Mikhail Bridges, it's just weird because we're looking at a lineup with Gabe and Kyle as the backcourt, Duncan's at the three. This is a smaller lineup against a more lengthy 
starting lineup or, or team in general. So it was weird. Mikhail Bridges was able to get some buckets uh, over smaller defenders. Uh, and then that ties obviously into the rebounding, which just felt like for one, it's something we talked about a ton last season. And we haven't talked we talked about it because it hasn't been problematic a lot this season, but Bam was at the perimeter a lot early on or even throughout this entire game, leaving PJ basically on an Island to try to box out guys like Deandre Ayton and guys like Jay Crowder, and Mikhail Bridges crashing. I think Mikhail Bridges had like seven rebounds really early on. Like he was really crashing the boards as well. Um, so it's just one of those things. I think another part of this is uh, there was a point when JaVale McGee came in, JaVale McGee was at like six or seven rebounds and Denmo was at like one. Uh, it felt like specifically tonight, he was a little step too slow uh, during stretches on both sides of the ball, but that just felt uh, problematic to me that they just had uh, no other option. It leads into another takeaway lady, later on, but when Kayla Martin goes out, they don't have a big body to kind of put in there as well off the bench to kind of plug some of those issues. No doubt the size was an issue tonight. Um, I, I thought also there was a general lack of aggression. I, I that, that just came in. I mean, some of this is just want to. I felt like when they started to struggle offensively at times, they were missing some bunnies that had carried over to the defensive end and to the boards. These things all go together. I also thought, I don't know if we'll get into this much, but I thought that the fact that they pushed pace early in the game I don't know that you can play with pace against this team. I, and, and one of the things I know we'll touch on a little bit is Kyle Lowry, but he was brilliant at pushing pace early, but then kind of a no show the rest of the game. And they, they fell apart a little bit when he came out. All right, Brady, number two. Yeah, I want to go in a different direction really quickly because I feel like it's the most important thing from this game, especially just go looking over and moving forward is we've talked a lot about Jimmy Butler and it feels like, uh, there's been opinions in both directions about Jimmy Butler. And the biggest thing I take away from this game, this is not one of those things where like, oh, you point out the guy you're missing because it's the easy thing to do. The Heat lacked rim pressure tonight. Like if there's one thing that you mentioned about the offense, it was that they had no rim pressure. Uh, looking at the starting lineup, it's a lot revolving around the things. First of all, Bam can do, which Aiton was kind of holding him up. And you're putting Gabe in a spot to basically be the only guy off the catch to put any pressure on the rim. They weren't really able to do that. They did it early in the first quarter. Obviously, as you mentioned, they were increasing pace. But after that point, uh, they were doing things to Tyler in that second half to kind of throw him off rhythm to kind of – you couldn't really dissect pick and rolls and get to the basket. That When you don't have that Jimmy Butler, that guy that can get to the rim, that can get to the foul line, but more importantly, the guy that could shift a defense because it felt like the Suns could just run whatever defense they wanted to this entire game. There was no shifting. They There was no reason to because they didn't have a Jimmy that they had to pull extra defenders down, get into their rotations – that's what the Suns actually did to Miami in opposite fashion, but they just did not have that guy. And it just feels like when we talk about Jimmy all the time, we cannot overlook that point. It doesn't matter the field goal percentage, the free throws, like the amount of pressure he puts on a rim and gets other guys, these looks, uh, I feel like that was just blaring in this one. Yeah. And that's the thing we complain about certain things with Jimmy until you're missing him. And then you see how he would have changed things. And, and look, it's, it's, it's not, you know, these things are not all reactive, right? Like just saying you put Jimmy Butler's 22 points in there and it would have made a difference. Uh, it's not that it's just, it's pace. I, I, I feel like early in the game, they might've played at a different pace with Jimmy in there. And I know that frustrates people, but there is a reason that the heat are 29th in pace this year. It is, it is somewhat intentional. This team in Phoenix, if you let them get rhythm, you're not beating them. Uh, and, and that's again, sort of what happened tonight uh, in that regard. And so I do think that they miss Jimmy. I don't think this is going to be a long-term thing. But I think that we see that for this Heat team to succeed against the best teams, saying we have enough is not enough. Uh, they need pretty much a little bit of everything that they have on the roster, at least available to Eric Spolstra, and it wasn't available to him tonight. Not an excuse. They got beat by what right now is a better team than them, uh, and they got beat badly, but he could have been used tonight. All right, do want to tell you about another sponsor of the Five Reasons Sports Network. That's prizepicks.com. Use the code 5FIVE. F -I -V -E. Get your initial deposit match. You put down $100. They will give you $100 to play with. You don't need to play it all at once. You can play NBA. You can play NHL. You can play any of the other sports that are active. You can play, again, across different sports as well. So go to prizepicks.com, the official fantasy partner of the Five Reasons Sports Network. Enter that code 5. All right, Brady, number three. Yeah, I want to stick with the offense for a second, and it's kind of just uh, maybe we – we talked about a lot in the last episode about maybe potentially against this Suns team. Um, and it's interesting because before this game, I kept saying, like, they have to work off-ball stuff and get into their off-ball sets. In a finals, let's say we project forward, and this team's in the NBA finals against the Suns, they just cannot spam on-ball 
type of actions because especially Eric Spolstra after the game just now, he was talking a lot about they were just up in their primary actions throughout this one. And it was pretty clear other than Duncan Robinson's kind of handoffs or off the catch possessions and sets. They were just up in the grills of the ball handlers. If it was all the depot in his small minute stints, if it was Tyler hero, if it was Gabe Vincent, they were just up in them that it just feels like if they were to see this matchup or see a team that says this, uh, just up in you on ball, they have to get into more of these other off ball sets. And that also ties into Jimmy, but it ties into Bam as well. I feel like, and that's where I kind of wanted to get to is that there was probably, there was a two possession back to back. I think it was toward the end of the second quarter where they got into their post splits and it led to a PJ bucket. The next one led to a Bam and one after he drove when there was nothing there. That's the stuff they have to get to. And it just feels like as much as we say it all the time, and it's specifically in losses when Bam out of bio is not getting to those type of spots and getting to maybe the, what they want to get to offensively, it just kind of throws them all off for the rest of the time. And that's what led to that in that second half. Uh, it's just a bad combination of just not having rim pressure, your on ball threats kind of being taken out and flattened out offensively. Plus your only other go-to of, of a playmaker inside the interior kind of being thrown off. It just felt like it was just a bad mixture for me kind of taking it away. Yeah. And I know there's going to be a lot of conversation about Bam tonight. Um, and so whether he steps up in some of these games, we talked about it in pregame that, you know, he had a great game out there in, uh, in Phoenix. I, I think that when you take a look at what happened in this one, it just wasn't impactful enough. Right. And, and, and I felt like, um, you know, at times in the game, he kind of, I thought he got frustrated. I thought others in the team got frustrated, but it wasn't just him. Like this is, this is one of those games that you have to kind of throw some of it out because everybody was bad, but I do think there are particular things we can pick at. Um, this was not Dwayne Dedman's best game in a heat uniform. Uh, this was a real struggle for him. And I, I don't think that we should jump to the Yurt conclusion right now against some of these teams. Cause I, we're not that far away from Dedman playing really well against Joel Embiid, but this game tonight, I mean, he was thoroughly outplayed by JaVale McGee. All right, Brady, what else you got? Yeah. I want to go in more of a positive direction because we just went in total opposite of this one, but Duncan Robinson, I think needs to be discussed because this is the second time he's played the Suns and the tech, second time he's kind of went off. And I don't think that is a coincidence, uh, but it's more about from a long-term sense and a big picture sense. There is a real connection between Duncan Robinson and PJ Tucker. Like, first of all, I think when you look at two man combos at NBA.com, I think those two have the most minutes played together. And from the eye test, I would totally agree with that. And the big thing with that is if, this team, we talk about Bam being the ceiling no matter what happens this year. The reason that we can say that is because P.J. Tucker could get shooters open. And the way I was looking, you know, the first the first three triples kind of really honed in on this. But even the next ones after that, every one of them involves P.J. Tucker. Every Duncan Robinson triple involves him. Uh, the hammer screens in the corner, the handoffs, everything like that is the things that they asked Bam to do last year or maybe his rookie season. Uh it's just really intriguing like that because I feel like we're going to be talking about this a lot more in a playoff series when we say for Bam to take over, they're going to need these shots from Duncan or these screens from PJ. And I think they can get that just enough. Uh, but I think this is a good buildup game for Duncan to kind of just see the ball go in, see these drop teams that he can kind of dissect in these ways. There's a lot of them among the top teams that we discuss either in the West or the East. There's a lot of these drop coverage teams that he's going to see. So I feel like there's a lot of these matchups that he can be the exploitable piece. Uh, and it doesn't have to be as simple as a handoff. Cause as we saw tonight, they were kind of using him in so many different ways that I feel like he can pop off uh, just depending on the right matchups. And just the raw statistics here from a confidence perspective, we talked a lot about Duncan Robinson's struggles at home. He was shooting 24% at home for a while. He's now at 36% from the season at home. Uh, that indicates that he has shot the ball at more than a 40% clip at home for an extended period of time. That matters. Um, that is enough reason to keep him in the starting lineup, uh, particularly with Bam. And he was the one guy who kind of had it going tonight. All right. One more sponsor we do want to tell you about, and then we're going to close up this episode here with Brady as we look forward and we're going to do more tomorrow. I promise you once we get to uh, floors yours, and then we got a big back to back for the heat coming up against the Cavs. Uh, and also the Wolves coming up this weekend. But we do want to tell you about our friend Mark Brown. You can find him at markbrownpa.com. 
This is the man with the estate plan. So if you're young with a family, you need to go check him out because he'll work with you to make sure that your money goes to the right place. He's also got a title company right there in house. He's just north of Cypress Creek Boulevard off of Andrew. He's got a small office, but they will help you with everything. I can tell you because I've used him on both counts for a closing uh, on a house. And I've also used him for my estate plan. I trust him. He's a big Heat fan. You can find him at markbrownpa.com. That's M-A-R-C brownpa.com. All right, Brady, take us home. Number five. Yeah, I kind of hinted at it before. Uh, the Caleb Martin injury, I know that Spo just said it was just a hyperextension right now. They're going to evaluate it tomorrow. Uh, but if we talk about this team structurally on the roster, we know that their biggest thing is depth, and they have depth at every position. But when watching when Caleb Martin goes down, like they need Markeith Morris in that spot. Like I feel like Caleb Martin has his spot that even if Markeith returns, like Caleb has done – just enough like watching even in that short stint of defensively offensively he was everywhere but the thing is that when he goes out I don't know who kind of comes up next there because they just don't have that extra big body not that Caleb's a big body but he's a big enough body and, and just such a great athlete that he can make up for that so it just feels like if that was to happen if they have one of those guys go down one of those type of bigs there are matchups where I can actually see Markeith being useful if he ever comes back um and I do want to tie this into a second one because I know this is our fifth takeaway, but I want to say that this feels like one of those wake-up losses. Like, I know they don't have Jimmy, uh, and I know this was just one of those type of games, but let's say even if it was a close game and they lost, like, I feel like they needed this type of blowout loss against a top team because it feels like when teams get to that first seed, gets late in the season, you start coasting. I just don't think that's what this team needs. I don't think they need – guys sitting out for long stretches and you're seven minutes and game minutes and saying, okay, we're in the first seed and locking it up and getting to that point. Like, I feel like they need to play this out, at least get a rhythm because this is not like some of these other teams that have had their team last year, or maybe have had their players all through this year uh, that I feel like this is one of those jolted kind of wake up losses that may help this team, you know, in the big picture. Yeah. And look, um, the Eastern conference is going to be a bloodbath. We know that. And some of those teams in the East are going to get better than they are, but I was having a conversation with Will Manso as I walked into the media room after the game tonight, we just looked at each other and like, yeah, that's the best team we've seen. And, and sometimes, you know, a record, uh, you can look at a record, but you have to see the team in person because you don't know who they've played against. And, and I know Phoenix got blown out at full strength against the heat before. And so we shouldn't make too much of it. But there's they're just things that they do, ball and body movement, knowing where they're supposed to be, the, the length that they come at you, all the things that give the Heat problems from other teams, Phoenix has a little bit of all of them. And I just thought tonight, if you didn't have everybody playing well and you didn't have everybody playing poise and you didn't have everybody playing as hard as they could possibly play. And when we were sitting, I was waiting for some of the interviews before I came in and did this. Tyler Hero and some of the other guys had their heads down as they went through the tunnel. They got beat tonight. They haven't been beaten like this too many times this year. It happened against the Celtics. It happened against Cleveland once, but they haven't had many of these games. And I agree with you. I think they needed it. And now they've got a tough back-to-back coming up here at home. They're still in control of the East. They're not going to catch Phoenix for the best record anyway. This game didn't really do a lot of damage in terms of standings or setup. They're going to have, if they play Phoenix in the finals, they're going to be on the road regardless. Okay. But I think you saw tonight why that is the best team in the league. And I think the heat saw that there's another level that they need to get to. Thanks for Brady for joining tonight. Check out our sponsors, get salas.com therapist preferred.com. Use the code five RSN uh, prize picks.com. Use the code five and check out Mark Brown, PA.com. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you for listening to the five on the floor on the five regional sports network.